Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. The quality of a leader is known in times of crisis. If I were to advise the president for just a minute, I would tell him to ban the Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Linturi, from attending interviews in media houses. Because if he continues to take interviews, he will expose himself and he will expose William Samoy Ruto. When the fake fertilizer came into the limelight, we expected Waziri to tell the nation that he was in charge, he was investigating, and maybe assure us that the culprits would be brought to book. But the manner in which Waziri handled this case is not only one thing, but also very embarrassing. Number one, Waziri told us after the cries from farmers themselves with evidence because we are in a world of uh, video and, and, and they were taking these technologies high tech with all the exposure Waziri came up and told us that the fertilizer was good this was just but a mere propaganda from the Azimir fraternity that was very shocking because the media was highlighting all this everywhere. Number two, Waziri told us after the PS, the, his counterpart they, that they work with, PS Rono, when he got wind that there was rumor of this fake fertilizer, he quickly did a letter and instructed the National Cereals and Produce Board to suspend the distribution of the fertilizer in question. That is a common practice and that is how things are supposed to be done. What did Waziri do? Waziri immediately overruled his PS, did a second letter instructing the NCPB to continue the issuance and distribution of the very fertilizer that was in question. And when John Alanamu highlighted this, because John Alanamu in this group was doing an investigative reporting, and they did emails to several government offices that were concerned to the NCPB and all this, Waziri very arrogantly dismissed John Alanamu and said John Alanamu is a crook when we all know that John Alanamu is an award-winning journalist tried and tested in terms of quality of uh, the, 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 the information that he gives because most of you can remember when they used to, de to do a content with the now nearly member of parliament um, Jichopevo, Hassan Ali, their content was proven to be one of uh, the most credible that you can trust. We've been able to really learn from the past and we've been able to now be to give even better fertilizer than we are talking about. Other than this uh, 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 crook by the name Alan Nyam, who I understood that from nowhere, right? Because we know him. That's why I've never responded to him because uh, he's a character that uh, uh, does not just look at things in the right perspective. We've not had any complications or any much complaints from, from the farmer. And I would want to ask the farmers to completely ignore th those kind of uh, bad stories because they have tested the fertilizer that we have, we have given them. You will find that uh, farmers appreciate the fertilizer that we have given them. The meeting of it was Ziri called John Alanamu, a crook. So yesterday, 
he got an opportunity with Sam Gituku at Citizen TV late night. And he was supposed to answer the questions of why he called John Alanamu crook, why he was telling Kenyans that this was an Azimio propaganda, and why he dismissed and overruled his PS. Yet, on further scrutiny and after they had been exposed, the government came out and admitted that indeed there are certain amount of fake fertilizer. He was further to explain why even after the chief cabinet secretary Salem Davadi had warned that there were some unscrupulous businessmen that had gotten into the very most sensitive dockets like agriculture and health and education and Waziri had instructed the NCPB to ensure that they don't take the country round the corner to come or you know act with speed and bring the perpetrators of this saga to book. Why Waziri still insisted would win king and misleading Kenya? And when he was given a chance, ladies and gentlemen, Waziri portrayed an image of a man who is ignorant and arrogant at the same time. He portrayed an image of a person who has lost touch with the people he works with in that very ministry. Because when he was claiming that John al did not contact their offices, John proved that he contacted the agriculture ministry via an email. Among all the uh, all government departments that were con uh, contracted, it was only the Ministry of Agriculture that did not respond. And Waziri looked like he does not know what he's doing in that docket. He does not care. He is careless. And people are wondering, what kind of people do we have in offices? Because William Ruto bragged, a man who had a plan to run this nation. He told us he had an economic model called the bottom up. He told us that when he gets to power, he was not going to continue subsidizing con uh, consumption because that was not sustainable. And he said he wanted to, to, to subsidize production. And he had emphasized that he was going to give subsidies fertilizer. And the kind of people that are in the very offices that would want to help the president realize his agenda are really wanting. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take a moment and listen to Waziri and their engagement with the Sam Gituku. He was so much pressed until after some moment, maybe very subconsciously, he started speaking broken English. Maybe he didn't even realize someone will bring this to his attention. And by the end of it, you will sympathize with Waziri because he is a man who lacks the capability of running that ministry. And if he does not want to embarrass himself, he should keep quiet. Because there is one rule in communication that if you don't know something, you keep quiet. Otherwise, you keep on uh, exposing yourself. And if Waziri would do himself a favor, he needs to keep up off from the media questions and media interviews. Because people respected Professor Linturi. Now, people are even wondering, is he placed... At, at, at the very basket where there are several Waziri who, who have got questionable academic credentials, already now Mincha is being questioned whether he's got, you know, real uh, genuine certificates. Now Waziri, we have the governor of Nairobi. And it seems that William Ruto's government is full of people who have got bogus certificates. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission had revealed that there are about 90% of civil servants who presented bogus 
certificate and they are earning salary. So the certificates are bogus. Fertilizer is bogus. Everything is bogus. Kindly take a look at this interview and you will agree with me that we do not have a country. Our country has gone to the dogs. No fake fertilizer. In fact, the closest you've come is saying that um, a bit of it was soil conditioner. And actually, the government spokesperson has said that what came from GPC, SBL Innovate, was a soil conditioner. Do you agree with those sentiments? Uh, you see, Sam, there are two products out there. Yeah. And that's why I like discussing a product myself mm. because the composition or, their, or, or what it's meant supposed to do is completely different. So the GPC story revolves around a product that was presented um, to, um, for certification, which was satisfied um, by standards of caps mm -hmm. uh, as a soil conditioner. Mm -hmm. And that is what GPC was supposed to take into the market. But what we've come later to realize is that the product certified that time is not the product that is in the market. So the product... When did you realize that? Uh, when this still came around. That's what I... By the way, on Tuesday, mm. when I appeared before the Senate committee, no, sorry, the National Assembly Right, is when I saw that back for the first time. Because I dismissed it, I could not even imagine that uh, it was even possible. But, you know, I have seen it very clearly that the fertilizer people are referring to is not the fertilizer that I'm distributing within the subsidy program. Mm -hmm. And, and even and when we want to be, and that's why I'm saying yeah. the burden on... It's not that easy to know who really brought into this system easily, because like today, remember, the, 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 the fertilizer that was being shown on social media flying out in videos was a product that was also distributed on board by the Kakamega County. Okay. Right? W was it? Let's move. Um, so you're making me like a monopolist of the fertilizer business. Let's move systematically. Of course, you are not a monopoly. You're the Minister of Agriculture, the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture. And you're saying that you had dismissed the story the first time it came in as a sense of accountability to the people of Kenya whom you are sworn in to serve is it fair for you to take a position without even testing uh, I will not take a position what I'm telling you because I am taking all the necessary uh, measures to ensure that our fertilizer within the program that we are running was properly insulated against interference and in terms of standard in terms of beating specs that were agreed between NCPMB and the suppliers. And if you have also listened to me, because we, the tender of the work, the, 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 the award to those people was given all the way in December. I personally, on the 20th of December, did direct that test analysis be done and be supplied to NCPMB before supply. Mm -hmm. So that if there was any question on quality, then we would still retest what was in the market vis-a-vis -vis or against what the, 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 the test mm. uh, certificates on comp comp composition that was applied. And, and, and that is why I'm asking, supply. is it accountability, is it responsible for a cabinet secretary to take a position against what farmers have complained about what journalism has produced in this country without even uh, uh, getting the facts? If you want to check your record, I never seen at any one particular time that the allegations are not true. I never. I've consistently maintained that the fertilizer I am doing, including the one that uh, we are discussing on uh, the 10 10, yep. is not fake. Mm -hmm. That is what I've insisted throughout. You have and it's what I've insisted, the standards yeah. are the ones that fall short of the Kenyan standard. You have insisted, but you have also said that the story about fake fertilizers coming from Azimio, you have called journalists crooks. I did not <clears throat> tell you. I have insisted, and I, and I said, you know, we have run 
a very successful program. And even last year I have seen, when we went out giving fertilizer, there was opposition because farmers knew the only fertilizer you can give is DAP, which, and, uh, which we wanted to correct because of its ability to really identify ourselves. Mm. So when we have... Then, when we have run such a, a nice program, we have been able to see its results, increase the production. When you look at the people that are really talking about fake, 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 and people do not really want us to discuss about the levels of standard, right. of course, from a political point of view, you would know that always those people that have never wished you well or this administration or the program or those that we have to go back to the farms uh, to really assist us produce enough food for this country dismissed us and mm. were busy demonstrating. And, and so that is the advice I cannot easily take right. because they are not the best people to advise us. And but whatever they say yeah. is what we will pick it and try to counter check. And, and that is why you find and, and now that even the cabinet in my peers, yes. when there was this, this matter arose, when I was out, he really acted with a lot of speed to say, please hold on. And uh, we want to hold on because we want to confirm whether the argument out there yeah. is correct or not. That was a measure of diligence that and, the ministry was and taking. And your principal secretary has found that indeed there are certain products by Kel Chemicals that are not meeting the standards. So the question I'm asking, now that you know what you know, do you think you are right to make the comments that you made that these were claims by your political detractors as well as crook journalists? I, the, 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 my position will not change when it Just comes think, to, to yeah, issues that. of saying that the fertilizer is not fake. I want you to play a clip. Please respond to my saying, specific question saying, so that you make Where I said, you know, the, I said if there is an ir irresponsible journalist, uh -huh. I specifically said. The what was written on uh, I don't know what it is called African censored. African censored yep. is not anything that I would take seriously because I've never taken him to be responsible, and that is. With a, 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 and now, uh, what have you found? You know, you know, one you must look at character, and I'm saying that this is not the first time yep. he has ran. So, and so, even last so, time, he ran another one. Waziri, which I'll be breaking the law to speak about the character of someone who is not here. So mm. let's focus on the GPC product that was featured on African Censored mm. versus what you, as a Minister of Agriculture, has found out about that fertilizer. Do you think that was crooked journalism or it was the right thing? That you, you see, even responsible journalism will require that before you do it, get a clarification from the ministry really to understand exactly what is happening. So when you run a story without hearing a sign, our sign is all condemning as an end. And you know, there is every reason for one also to say, no, this is not fair. So from what yesterday, because on Monday, is, yeah, on Monday I appeared before the committee, that is the first time I saw that back. So why would you so, comment about something And, you and it's okay. because yeah. there is no single time when I inquired from my officers at the NSPB that we were doing a fertilizer called GPC. It, has not, it is not on our, in any of so, our records. So let me ask you this. So when the information I got, and I even asked the contracts for the contracts that were signed, was on a, on a contract for a soil conditioner. A soil conditioner's contract, it was entered even before this administration came into office on the 31st of March 2022. So I was right to say there is no fake fertilizer it is not possible because in my mind and the records show that the engagement and the agreement between NSPD and the GPC guys is not on fertilizer. But when the bag was presented to me, I was really shocked because the, 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 the bag was labeled fertilizer. And it so, is not. And it is not. So what is it? So it's a crook. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> who? The, 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 the fellow who decided yeah. to cheat on the farmer's confidence in our system, in our infrastructure, and supply the wrong thing. And the cabinet secretary did not detect that with, see, with, with your system. Is there a system that does monitoring and evaluation of what is in the market? You see, uh, Sam, yeah. you see, unless a matter is brought to your attention, by who? And, you, and by any officer, anybody in the public. But you dismissed the story. Anybody. So 
you know, you dismiss a statement pending, and I have sent on how it's also brought. Because I've told you responsible journalism will require, if you have a story on me, please check the facts, try and also make me aware so that you can also hear my comments. So if I have some history about you, or about how you conduct your investigation and story, so how do you want me to take you seriously? The, I, I'm telling you, yep. because you know I really respect the journalism. Right. And I've, I know the power of the media. Right. But I also say, you know that the, because you have the power of the media, you must also exercise that authority responsibly. Right. Because it is not fair. So, so tell me, is it your statement that it is not possible for the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture to assess what is being distributed in the market uh, for purposes of agriculture? You see, let me tell you, depending on the context that uh, uh, we must look at this matter in the context that we are discussing this story. Mm -hmm. When we got to know about it, we have gone out there and we have established that yes, there is a product. We've managed to do it. It is within us to be able to check when there is a report. But without any report, it's just like <coughs> you won't tell me the police can move to swift into action to rescue a somebody who is under siege without the information. Okay. So when we got the information, we've done what we, we've we been able to manage up to now. Mm. They have seen it, but but, but was it, it sounded been. like uh, your peers and yourself were reading from different scripts because on the day that both of you spoke, the principal secretary wrote a letter saying that investi <coughs> excuse me, investigations need to be carried out on the said fertilizer. Yourself, you are busy saying that there's no fake fertilizer in the country. Why isn't there... Uh, United or Union, what is it? A single source of communication through the ministry. You see, depending on what matter we want to address, you look at the agency. And uh, in those circumstances, and be able to respond accordingly depending on what uh, matter that you want to address. So if, like, for example, there was last week out of the country, and where I was, there was no network, you can't reach me. Any responsible officer within my ministry, I would better take responsibility of somebody making a decision to stop distribution of a fertilizer so that it doesn't get to many people than none who waits for me to come and make a decision and then let many farmers get exposed. So, so tell me, Waziri, um, how many bags are in question here? 3,000. The deputy president spoke about 50,000. So that is your one because I don't know. I am telling you, we have an e-voucher system that we use. And anybody who picks fertilizer <coughs> within our stores, we will trace you to the time, to the store that you took. And I'm happy you've even brought a story here about the recall of Benilin. Because, I, and this one, we should use it even for Kenyans to really listen and understand the issue we are discussing. Mm -hmm. Because the fertilizer that was being supplied was okay. The only problem arises out of a certain batch. And this batch is known. So, 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 and where the fertilizer has yeah. been distributed to is known. So this is and that's why we recall that what, is of what part of fertilizer? Uh, the the care of fertilizer, uh -huh. right? The ten to six ten. Yeah, right. That is what is not meeting the standards. Uh -huh. And we have sent, we have called on farmers to return that fertilizer. So where did the deputy president get that figure from? Fifty thousand, because he spoke in Rwanda in Kigali, and he said the fifty thousand bags are the only ones that are in question. You know, the president, uh, the deputy president, is my boss. Yeah, and uh, he can speak for himself. So you don't so know I'm figure telling you about the figures that I am sure of, yeah. the figures that we've been able to verify from my end. And in any case, I have not seen this speak. That is yes. So what you are telling me is I'm not thinking that I've not done. You are telling me it was in Kigali. Uh, when it was in Kigali, well, then I'll, I was get, in I'll get to the clip of the deputy president, then you tell me about it. But first, um, so what happens to these farmers that you say for and sure? And you see, let me tell you, like let me yes. tell you, um, uh, Sam. Yep. Even if the deputy president, for example, say in the 50, he, he, may, he may have uh, probably been referring to the total number mm -hmm. of bags that were 
were given mm -hmm. or awarded to this firm to supply. But it may not, pro and, and I'm trying to, not really trying to justify yep. my, uh, what, uh, the fact that he's saying fifth and I'm saying three, but I'm telling you, when you look at, for example, the first consignment to this contractor mm -hmm. was fifth, right? So when a whole uh, uh, manufacturer is condemned without really people exactly knowing, right, or like the details of the badge out building, people can easily be misquoted. So that is the explanation so, so between no, the different... I have not heard, I have not seen, I have not even consulted... Surely, you haven't heard what the deputy, deputy president said. By the way, let me tell you. Yeah. I am in business. In that ministry, yeah. it's so busy that I can no, you will not even believe the last time I read a newspaper. That's how busy it is. You've been looking for me to appear in these shoes, and I'm not available. Because I'm running up and down, trying to fix And you're things. not concerned about I'm the questions the, Kenyans, Kenyans make, are asking? Me, uh, I am not seen in the office because I'm concerned about what Kenyans are saying. And because when I first of all got to know about it, right. I left Nairobi at 11, went to Olenguruoni, because there was in Naguru, went to, to Sirikwa, went to, went to Molo, right. and uh, went to... I went to four places. Okay. Was the it, same afternoon. Was it before and I asked the farmers to tell me whether there was any issue. And nobody. Nobody told us from that issue. area. Okay. All right. Was it? So you speak about John Allen Namu, who now joins us live. John Allen, uh, good evening. You've had the evening, cabinet secretary for agriculture, what he has to say. Do you have any yes. response? Yes. Um, he claims that uh, we never reached out to the ministry. That's a lie. On the 15th of February this year, we reached out via their email. We reached out to one of his assistants, Putamarete. His ministry is the only ministry, is the only government department that did not respond to our claim. So when he says that I am a cook and I am a liar, perhaps you should take a hard look in the mirror. Wow. The cabinet secretary, so he yeah. says that he actually reached out to the ministry 15th of February. You didn't see that communication? The ministry is not me. Yeah? There are many people in the ministry should be saying, sent to my email, to the office of the cabinet secretary, to the attention of my secretaries, or my PA. That is how that it would have exactly gotten to me. That is exactly what we did. If John Marat is not in your office, let him share the email, to him the phone number of the so people you so get what, and got what, into. What the minister is saying, what the minister is saying is respect to his office. What the minister is saying is the office. And over the past few days, if people have been listening to the Senate hearings and to the parliamentary hearings about what's been happening, including his own statement about that, about that satellite. Everything that we have been saying has been borne out by facts and by science. I don't know what yeah. right the minister has against people or against African centers, but the work that we have done is above board, it stands above board, and it will remain above board. Right. If he has things that, that can controvert what we are saying, let him table the evidence. It is his opportunity to do this. And, okay. and finally, Sam, yep. you must remember that it is in the public interest that we are doing this work. I'm not doing this work because I have a personal guy against the legal inquiry. I do not know him from Adam. And try, again, okay. if he has a personal guy against me, he should take it up with me personally, not to try and mislead the, the, the nation in such a serious time. All right, so Cabinet Secretary, I'm, I'm sure you're having challenges uh, hearing John Allen, but what exactly he's talking about is that uh, he did the due diligence of confirming and getting the side of your story uh, from the ministry. Uh, so how should Kenyans who have questions about products in the agricultural sector, how are they supposed to deal with it if the Cabinet Secretary does not read newspapers, is busy, uh, probably not available? I have said the ministry is big. And any matter that is addressed to me. You can ask the donor community or anybody. Any matter that is addressed to me of national interest, of concern, I deal with it within 24 hours. This I am telling you because it's not one, it is not two. And it is, I would really have wanted, because I've told my officers, any matter that touches on issues to do with the public because of the respect I have for honor and the respect for this People, the people in this country and my oath of office, mm. let the matter, what you can't handle. So you, you give, you, let the matter come. You, you say in 24 hours you so, do, you do so respond. I do respond. This took you more than two weeks. I'm telling you it was never brought to my attention. And that's why I, I'm challenging him.
to give us the phone number, okay. the email address that is e used so that we can also try to check and know whether it's fine or not. John Allen, what are you saying? Mr. Linturi is saying that it was not brought up to his attention. It is not my responsibility beyond reaching out here the official channels that we have done to then take it to his office personally. He has uh, he has official communication channels. We reached out via Kilimo. We spoke to Mr. Marete, who is in his office. We reached out our our journalist, Ms. Winfrey wrote to him on the 15th of February this year. The story ran on the 10th of March. So this thing of saying that that he that, that he, he he was not felt personal is not a personal. He is a, he's a cabinet secretary serving on behalf of the Republic of Kenya. He must remember that. And I, I I'm taking I'm taking very very great exception to the fact that he keeps on dragging our name through the mud when it is us who have brought this this issue to the attention of the public. If he is worth his thought as a cabinet secretary, must apologize to our organization and to the nation for doing something like this. Okay, uh, maybe you may respond so that we can move on. I've not turned to what I'm responding to. No, he's, because I've he, only he's, saying, yes. he's saying that uh, you have been defaming the organization that he works with or he works for which is unwarranted. He also says that uh, the story that they run is not a personal interest, it's the question of public interest, which I believe you would uh, be interested in. Gituko, you know, I've just been making very fair comments. Right. Right? About him and the people that he works around with. Calling someone a crook is not fair comment. Yeah, because, you see, I, I don't think I'm telling you, just show me your sin, but I am telling you the main number of times that I've made reference to where he works or he works with is because this is not, he should also tell this, the people of this country, this is not the first time he has written a story and a report like this on mm. me, on issues that he never substantiated. I ran me and I kept quiet. I decided not even to go to court. So when I'm told he's done a story or these things, that I don't bother because I don't want to get to that history. Okay. Right? Because there's a different chapter I have started. So please understand. And what I'm saying is a fair comment I did. Right? So you must really understand where I am coming from. Sorry, Jonathan, I want us to come to the end of this. What did you want to reply to? Yeah. So when Mr. Linturi is referencing stories that we have done about him before, again, you are based on evidence. If he looks, if he bothered to look through the story, he would see that it was based on evidence that we found from the from the integrated financial management system about about um, uh, an issue of procurement of gold medals. While he was senator, we had companies that he owned or had a controlling interest in. We did our research, we did our work, we again did it in the public interest. He was the vice chair of the Senate Committee on Agriculture at the time that this was happening. So if you think that there's something personal I have against him, again, I do not know this person. I do not know him beyond the fact that he is a public officer. And again, if it is fair comment that he is speaking, if, fair, if, he, if, he, if, he, if he is fair comment that he, 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 he is saying that, that, that he has given, let him prove what it is about our story is crooked, what it is about me specifically that is crooked. <coughs> we have courts of law that are both open to myself as well as to him. If he thinks that there is a person issue between me and him. But again, Sam, this is a distraction. The thing about the fertilizer issue is it is a public interest issue, period. All right, Whether Sam. Sam. He calls me a group from sun up to sunset. He can continue doing it, but let okay. him go before the public and make him his, 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 his uh, ministry position clear about the, the issuance of the fertilizer that is either that standard or fake, as we have shown in our documentary. That's it, Sam. Oh, all right. Thank you so much, uh, John. And, uh, 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 let me say this. Yes, your final word. Because I don't want them to continue misleading the public. You know, it's just mentioned that I, w I did work when I was the chair or the vice chair of the Agricultural Committee in mm. Parliament. Mm -hmm. I have never served in a committee, in any committee of agriculture, either in the Senate or in the Assembly, of the National Assembly. And that is what he's repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's wrong, it's misleading. What was your committee while at the Senate? I sat in many. I was vice chair of public investment. Uh -huh. In the National Assembly, I was the chair of public investment committee. Okay. I sat in energy. I sat in legal affairs. 
So I sat in many Never in agriculture. Never in agriculture. Okay, all right. So was it, I want us to conclude this, but um, not long ago, I think it was sometime last year, there were donations of fertilizer to this country from Algeria as well as Russia. Where is that fertilizer? Of course, the fertilizer. You remember that's why, that, uh, why we've been able uh, to really sustain and be able to use that uh, to, to really supply our farmers with specific crop fertilizers is because we used that fertilizer to blend and make more bags of fertilizer that we have distributed mm -hmm. to the farmers. Mm -hmm. We used it as a raw material so that we would be able to, to, to produce more, which we have really put through into the system and which farmers are enjoying. How does that work? How many bags are there? From no, Algeria, we for instance. Bags. We don't bring bags. It's in tons. Okay, so, so use, how many tons? We use, uh, from uh, we, I think uh, we received like 8,000 8, uh, tons, I think. 8,000 tons. Around, this is from? I think from Algeria, I say 8,000 tons. Uh -huh. And I think, yeah. And, and Russia? At, uh, uh, third, I think. I may not really remember correctly, and because I don't want to want you to accuse me for misleading the public, mm -hmm. but I can give you the figures tomorrow. Okay, but that's so, what so make me understand this, that um, the status of the collection of Algerian donated fertilizer material from bulk stream terminal in Mombasa to a by farm contracted for blending at their respective factories. Maisha Minerals and Fertilizers Limited, quantity allocated was 160,000 50 kilogram bags, Intracom Formula Limited, 160,000 50 kilogram bags, and the qualities collected, I mean, quantities collected are indicated. For the two farms, it was 184,000 bags. How do you translate those figures from 8,000 tons to this number of bags? So let me put it clear, uh, Sam, because those are, that's a question that requires uh, the actual numbers. But we have the NSPB to pre-qualify people that would use that material and negotiate um, that uh, the pricing, the, 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 the blending, mm -hmm. so that they would produce more material. So this is information is not in is public is is, is, is public uh, uh, information which I can give and the the national series. What, 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 what do you mean, Waziri? What do you mean that? Means? This I mean, this we got. No, I'm saying it's public information okay. which we can offer. So when we get, we, when we got the um, fertilizer, and we decided to make it as raw material for blending, so that we produce more bags and crop specific. Remember, uh -huh. I, how we the parameters that we use to allocate. Uh, what or to make any fertilizer in the country depends on the soil standards that we have done. And different ecological zones do different crops. Mm. So when we want fertilizer to give to the cabbage farmers, to the potato, to the rice farmers, is different from what we use for coffee. We so, use for so this, this depending on the deficiencies yeah. of the soils in those particular areas. And because we have that history now when we got them, and uh, we want them to also extend the subsidy and support those farmers, then there was agreement that they are blended to specific for, uh, for specific so, crops so you give it to then private entities to do the blending? What we did, there was a tender yeah. that was uh, done so that they would pick people that have the capacity around to do the blending. At what cost? I mean, you know now, the costing, you know, this is not a question I was really prepared for. It is, was not done at the ministry headquarters, but at least the, that process was done. We can give information if so required, but that process so was done. So who benefited then from the donation? It is the farmer. It's not, it is not who benefited. But you don't them. know the cost. I am telling you, you don't want me to take me to lying, because I'm telling you I'm not a procurement officer. Number two, this thing, we don't hand be me, because that is what they are doing to pre-qualify and get people that have capacity in town mm. to blend the fertilizer for us. And then we'll be able and to... And how do it. they know that what they receive is the right quality? You see, <laughs> uh, Sam, yeah. and this is why I'm saying this thing is more scientific than anything else to understand this story about this fertilizer. Any product that comes out of the country at the point of entry, 
there are those agencies that do testing for conformity of standards. Mm -hmm. So any fertilizer that comes, for example, because this is specific fertilizer we are talking about, it will be tested by CAPS. The Kenya Plant Health Inspectory Service at the port of Mombasa yep. will, also be te will, also to, uh, will also test to see whether what we are getting a, as a, a donation or support is not reactive material. So okay. all these things one. I think what I'm asking Waziri is, so <coughs> donation comes. Yes. It is given to farms to blend. They blend the supply to the NCPB. The yes. NCPB sells to the farmers. Is there a way of NCPB knowing that what it's giving the farmers is of good quality? Of course, when uh, we've been given the product and it's supposed to be mixed with other, uh, uh, with, the, uh, we, uh, with other raw materials for blending, of course, it must be tested to see whether the, remember I'm saying the fertilizer is being blended for specific mm. uh, crops. Yeah, that, that, so when the blending is done, of course we must test. So does to, NCPB know what the quality of what is in they the stores? No, no, you see when you store you become general. So I'm answering myself to that area of specific fertilizer, that material that was used to, to blend, that was used to blend. So it was tested, it was known. But the National Citizens and Produce Board will always get to know how many fertilizer bags that they have within their system. So because they, our evo they know the quantity, system, they know the not quantity. quality. They know the quantity. Of course, they always know that the quality that they have is quality of good is, is a product of good quality because before, before production or a manufacturer produces, is always, uh, it is expected because it's certified by the standards well, was it, body. Don't you see there's a weakness there? Because 3,000 farmers, according to your figures, 50,000 according to the deputy president, may have received fertilizer that is not as per what is indicated in the bag. Don't you see a weakness that NCPB is not playing a role or maybe doesn't have a capacity to play a role, which now needs to happen. But the, <clears throat> probably, you know, this thing is also coming in. Uh, the, uh, we, we, well, there are a few things we are learning from it. We may require to see, see and how to develop regulations to make it tighter. Because just like you are saying, yes, we have established that because we could have crooks out there that would take advantage of um, the standard mark they, they get after qualification and give us a, a banned product, then there's a need for us to really have continuous testing. Okay. So this has awakened us, and uh, probably by use of our cafes, stores, car or any others, we will see how to see so that at least... Okay. But uh, then the, there's something else we must also do, is that these people that have done this, they must face the full force of the law. We must make sure that the, the, the most ash terms right at the, uh, the law is really limited on them so that to deter people with this kind of habit. Waziri, you must love the word crooks so much. You've used it several times on this show. But that is crooks. You know, you can't really take advantage of innocent people okay. and a certification you have been given and produce the thing of their own quality. It is not right. It's being dishonest. All right, Waziri. Thank you so much for making time for us of this conversation on tonight. And of course, uh, Waziri Mithikali Inturi tells me that he has to travel to Mombasa to receive a consignment of fertilizer. Where is it coming from? Which country is it coming from? <laughs> He won't tell me. Um, but anyway, we'll see in the news tomorrow. We'll take a short break. We're back.